What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show how you can do American Thunder style graphics inside Photoshop. This has been a highly requested video. There's going to be tons of tips and tricks along the way and a special little bonus tip at the end. So stick around for that. Let's go. What's up everyone? So in today's video, we're gonna dive into the world of American Thunder. Uh, this is a brand from the 90s. It has been super popular in the last three or four years. Um, it's basically super bold graphics, usually oversized on the t-shirt. Um, lots of lightning, lots of eagles, wolves, wizards, things like that. So basically what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna jump into Photoshop and show you guys how you can sort of recreate this style um, using, you know, certain styles of text, certain effects on um, graphics. And we're going to basically, I'm gonna start with um, a finished design, but then I'm going to implement other elements into it so that you guys can sort of follow along and see what I'm doing. So without further uh, delay, let's get into it. So first I wanna show you guys um, what I'm talking about, right? So. I just Googled, you know, American Thunder shirt, and I'm sure you guys have seen these around. Um, yeah, they're basically like truck stop shirts. You know, you'd see these at flea markets. You know, nowadays you'll find them on like Grailed or <laughs> eBay or places like that. And you pay, you know, fucking a hundred dollars for it. But um, yeah, they are. Ugh, that's not good. Um, yeah, they've become super popular. And, um, you know, if you look, I just put an American Thunder rapper. You can see there's Playboy Cardi wearing one, Smoke Per. Travis Scott uh, has, he, Travis Scott's probably the most popular person who has worn them besides this one. This is, I mean, probably the most iconic American Thunder shirt. Um, and, this is sort of when it started like exploding was when uh, Kanye was wearing it. So what we're gonna do is just dive into Photoshop and I'll show you guys this. So this is something that I created. Um, and as you can see, it's like fairly simple. I think I have yeah, some clouds in the background there. I'm just gonna think about it for a second, all right. Um, so how do we get to this place, right? Um, it's honestly not that difficult. It's just a series, it's just basically collaging everything together, getting a layout that you like, and um, you know, implementing these, these small effects on the different elements. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is um, how I did this lightning, because it's, it's, it's one of the few things in here that I, actually did by hand um you know you could easily go on a stock image website and just find a image of lightning and throw it in the background but the thing about the american thunder shirts is that a lot of the elements are painted they're illustrative um and the purpose of this channel at least in this tutorial, um, is to show you guys how you can do it without, you know, necessarily being the greatest artist in the world. Um, and so we're going to use photographic elements for the most part. That being said, there was room to do hand-drawn stuff in this. So I thought that that would add more to the authenticity. So that's why I chose to draw all of these lightning, uh, bolts myself. So, it wasn't hard. I basically just took a, um, it was just sort of time consuming. Um, I basically just took a hard brush and just went in here. And first I put on the effect just so I could see how it was looking as I was doing it. I found that sort of helpful. Um, and basically the effect is an outer glow of this sort of teal color. Um, I didn't add any noise. I tried it with noise, but I didn't really like how it looked. And I 
didn't want there to be noise in the background, but then like have the eagle not have any noise on top of it. I just wanted everything to feel more consistent. So um, no noise, mostly dealing with um, spread and size. Um, opac opacity is at 100. Um, yeah, and essentially I just found like a super bright, like saturated blue color that mimicked, you know, some of the examples I found. And then just sort of started like drawing, sort of wiggling my hand and just drawing this lightning in here. And, um, you know, I'm not like a, a Photoshop brush expert, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a way that you can do this with brushes, but to get these pointy ends, I basically just took the eraser tool and just like went like that when I was done. Pretty, pretty simple, right? So. Yeah, I basically, what I tried to do is create a composition that was relatively symmetrical. Um, that's one thing that I noticed about a lot of the examples that I found online were the lightning was not perfectly symmetrical, but as an overall composition, it had the same feel on the left and right side. So basically, you know, I wanted the, the starting points at the top and bottom to be um, sort of parallel to each other. Um, so that was important. And I think that's gonna really help you guys create compositions that feel more, um, I guess, aesthetically pleasing. And um, another thing I would do, you know, is like, um, I think in this case, I put the eagle in first so that I could basically work the, the lightning around the eagle. So you see here, it sort of like curves under the beak and up into this area and that's just a matter of like you know trying to make everything feel like it's meant to be together you know you don't want to just like randomly throw lighting in here that's that's also one one reason why you know just throwing a an, an, uh, lightning stock image in the background might not be the best idea so this is going to give us basically a much better um a much better um, overall feel in my opinion so you know we could add more lightning there um basically so i use like a bigger brush i think that i'm using now i probably use something closer to maybe like 40 and um don't worry about it going with the eagle right there because we're gonna fix that and then for the little streaks, you know, I just like did a brush about half the size and did these little streaks coming off of it. Um, and I'm sort of, I would normally be zoomed in a lot closer to do this, but I just want to show you guys sort of overall. So that's essentially how I did the lightning. Um, like I said, it's just a matter of, of getting the glow exactly how you want it, getting the color set in, um, and that sort of thing. So I think from here, what might be cool is if we just grabbed a new image so I can show you guys how you could how you could throw in something else besides this eagle. So let's just get rid of the eagle for now. This is, yeah. So as you can see, this sort of um, area here has been edited, so it fits the eagle. So we might have to make some adjustments there, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. So um, I'm gonna go on Pexels. That's my favorite um, free stock image website. Um, yeah, they have a ton of great stuff. I've used it in, in a few other videos. So we're gonna just put in, um, wolf because I saw a ton of examples where wolves were being used with these shirts. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking of doing something more of what, with like a full body like this um, rather than just the head of the wolf. I think it might be cool to switch it up. So that's not a wolf. Uh, let's see. I think honestly that one that I kind of, this one is probably gonna be our best option. I like that it's um, relatively in, you know, it's in focus for the most part, you know, it loses focus in the back, but that's probably gonna be um, sort of 
faded out anyway, so I'm not, this is the main focus of the design and it's pretty striking. So let's just use this one. Free download. Grab it off the desktop, get over into Photoshop. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna use the rectangular tool, grab what we need real quick, select the whole thing, command um, C, copy, then over here, command V into our new design. So the photo is already relatively large. Um, this is, you know, you're not gonna get much bigger than this on pixels, but this is, you know, decent for sure. Um, obviously the bigger image you have, the better. I wouldn't recommend working with anything that, you know, you drag it into Photoshop and it's like, you know, like this big or something. It's just, it's, once you blow it up, it's gonna look really bad. So um, we're just gonna enlarge this image a bit, drag the corners, fairly simple, get it to a place where, you know, it feels like the, the head is the focus of the design. Down a bit, we're gonna end up changing this text because feel the wind makes absolutely no sense right now. Um, so, normally with images, if you've watched like, if you watched my very first bootleg uh, rap tutorial, I went through and basically outlined the main object with a brush and then I created a clipping mask. Um, we're not gonna do that here only because I want the, the graphic to have more of sort of a painterly feel. Um, and if I do the brush outline, it's gonna create not completely hard edges, but relatively hard edges. And um, if I, I think if I just erase around it, it's gonna give us closer to a feel. Um, to like a, a painterly feel, I guess, um, along with a few, a few other effects that I'm gonna add. So I'm literally just gonna go in here and well, if I'm smart, I'll duplicate this first in case we need to go back and we don't like how we erased it or whatever, so. And I'm literally just like eyeballing it. And this is, um, you know, just something you wanna do to, honestly, if you're just like testing out images, um, and you're not even really sure what you're gonna, gonna wanna use, like maybe you don't even wanna use a wolf at all, you're just throwing things in here. Um, this is a pretty quick way to just sort of give you an idea of how everything's gonna look. Um, but like I said, it's also giving us sort of a painterly feel because the edges are so soft. And as long as you're like pretty close to um, you know, the edge of, of the main object, the wolf in this case, like, it's, it's totally fine. And, you know, just like, as a general rule of thumb, you know, before you get anything printed, before you, you know, if this is something for a client, you always want to go in and just get the real, like, details ironed out and make sure, like, um, you've done as good a job as possible of, of um, you know, erasing around the object or clipping the object or ho however you've done it. So anyways, so we're in a pretty decent place here. You know, most of it is erased. Um, you know, we can get a little bit more there. So on the bottom, I'm not gonna do a gradient because then we'll be stuck with black you know, black going over the um, lightning, and we don't really want that. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did to the rest of the image and just erase it. Because I think, like I said, um, that's creating more of like a painted effect where like, you know, it's sort of blending into the canvas and into the lightning and all that. So here's where we're at. So, one thing that I've definitely noticed about the American Thunder um, stuff is um, that it's pretty, you know, bold and pretty bright. And one really quick um, trick to make basically any photo um, sort of pop a little bit more, as much as I hate saying that phrase, make it pop. Um, you basically just take this layer, and let's just name this, 
original um, wolf photo and then duplicate it. So I'm hitting Command J and it's gonna throw another one to the top above it. And then if you just um, go to filter and Gaussian blur right here and basically just blur it until you start losing most of the details. Um, so there you can kind of see still too many details. I think where it was is pretty good, like 30. Click okay. And then up here in your um, blend mode, change it to overlay. And you can see that basically make it, it makes the dark um, areas darker, more um, higher, uh, higher contrast, I guess. And if you're not super stoked about how this looks, you can always just bring the opacity down and just sort of get it to a place where, you know, it's not overly, um, you know, manipulated or maybe that's what you want, you know, but um, it does sort of give it a little bit more of like an airbrush like effect. So, I'm feeling good. I think I'm gonna bring this down to maybe like 75. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I don't love how the nose kind of is disappearing. Um, so maybe a little bit more. Yeah, maybe like, yeah, all right, let's just call it 40. So, from here, I'm just gonna merge these together. Um, you could duplicate these and group them and like save them for later. That's definitely not a bad idea. I'm feeling pretty confident about where this is heading. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna erase a little bit more down here. Cause that was bugging me. Okay. So, from here, I'm going to um, I'm just gonna rename this quick. Um, I'm gonna create a smart object because we're gonna start getting into coloring this and in case it looks terrible, I wanna be able to just um, revert to our original um, blurred overlay graphic. So um, we're gonna go to image adjustments, selective color and uh, I'm just gonna use the bootleg wrap stuff from my previous video, because for one, it's already in here, and two, I think the effect that we want is gonna be pretty similar to that anyways, so let's just try out a few of these. Okay. Mm, I don't like how that's like white all of a sudden. That's kind of interesting. What I, I mean, that is, I mean, that sort of now just looks like a painting. So that's pretty dope. I think just like the combination of doing that Gaussian blur and, um, and uh, the overlay really helped out a lot. It's kind of interesting. I don't love the green. I think I want to use the first one, honestly, and then just like, I don't know. yeah, just like, I don't want it to be quite as yellow. goes to show you that you know if you're not super happy with um, the preset as it is um, and I will say that that those specific presets were made more for like skin tones um, than they were for like fur so 
might be a reason why it didn't look super great right off the bat, but it wasn't hard to, you know, get it to a place where I was happy with it, just like messing around for, you know, what was that, like 30, 40 seconds, so that's cool. So I'm just gonna bump this over, get it to where I want it a little more. Um, I'm gonna now duplicate this because I wanna keep editing with the eraser tool. So I duplicated it and then I rasterized it. I just wanna keep kind of picking away at this to get it where I want it. Another super, e um, super useful thing that you can do if you're using the eraser tool and um, you wanna make sure you don't miss any big parts is just do Command I on the image and that will invert it so that basically, you know, all the blacks are white and you can see like, you know, I missed a pretty decent chunk of stuff here. So I'm gonna go in and fix that really quick. And then it'll be as simple as inverting it back when I'm done. So this is basically just, you know, way to make any, any uh, edits that you might have missed. So yeah, that feels better. Get a little more detail there. And uh, again, like I said, I would normally, you know, zoom in and get be real meticulous with this. But if you've seen any of my other videos, I try to basically get the information to you guys as quickly as possible so you don't have to sit through, you know, an hour video or um, watch me speed a bunch of stuff up or whatever. So, all right, so now we're just gonna do Command I, flip it back, and boom. So, what could we do from here? Um, well, first of all, we're gonna change this text. Um, one of the other examples that I think had a wolf and obviously like if you're doing these shirts yourself and they're for a brand or whatever you're gonna want to come up with your own slogans um i saw a, another wolf shirt that said only oops only um if you decrease the text size um, as much as it's, as it's important to try to keep all the stroke sizes the same if you can, just for the sake of consistency, um, sometimes you just have to do whatever looks best for your eye, I found. So, holding the strong, survive. Whoops, oh no. <laughs> So now I'll show you the effect that's on this text. Fairly straightforward. Um, the reason also, the reason I chose this font is because this is the Travis Scott Wish You Were Here font. And I thought, you know, given the fact that he sort of popu popu popularized, Jesus. <laughs> He's sort of the reason that these shirts became popular in the last few years. I thought it was fitting to use that font that he uses on so much of his stuff. So it's called ITC Souvenir. Um, it was as easy as just Googling ITC Souvenir dot TTF. And you know, I was able to find it within a couple minutes, so. Okay, I'm looking all right. Make this a little bit bigger. We're basically just, you know, playing around with the text, getting it to a place that um, looks good within the composition. Um, and I'll show you guys real quick what the um, effects are that are going on. 
So it's, it's essentially just a center stroke. Here I've got it at 16. Um, you know, I wanted it to be bold enough that it would kind of pop off the shirt once it's, um, you know, shrunk down on, onto a t-shirt. And uh, then I just threw a gradient on there and I, and I followed, um, you know, the angle of the text, you know? So it's in the middle still, you know, if you put the angle at 90, it wouldn't make sense because it would not be in the middle. So I just had to basically work with the angle here until it was actually in the middle. And um, yeah, then I just threw a drop shadow on it. I did linear light, um, mostly just, you know, with distance and, and size. Um, so that basically gives it sort of like a glow slash um, drop shadow, like a nice deep like drop shadow. Um, so yeah, that, those are the only like three effects that are on the text. That's sort of what I found with American Thunder stuff is as opposed to a lot of the bootleg um, style t-shirts, um, the text on American Thunder is relatively um, simplistic. It's just a lot of gradients, um, sometimes no gradients at all. Um, but yeah, so now I'm basically just reworking some of this lightning to make sure it fits better with this wolf image. Move that over there. I've got this cover up on here. I'm gonna move that because that was for the eagle. Um, but basically the cover up layer was, um, you know, I just created a new layer and I went in with the um, brush tool and I was basically just um, using hardness at zero for the brush. And I was just basically just <clears throat> painting in um, areas that you know weren't really working with the text or with the lightning. So there, you see I'm getting rid of some of it um, underneath the text. So it kind of enhances the readability of it. For the most part, I mean, it's pretty on point. Um, there, I would just probably um, remove the lightning altogether. So it works better with the um, text. I don't like that there. I don't like this one. We're gonna get rid of that. That's okay, I don't like that. Don't like that little one. Uh, this as a whole could probably just get moved down. Whoops. The only thing is, is I want it to be consistent with that part of the bolt. Um, so we're gonna try to keep that in mind when we move it but I just didn't like the placement of that very much. Let's see if that looks. Yeah, that looks better. Just get rid of that little guy. So yeah, I mean, from here, it's basically just a matter of, you know, continuously tweaking um, these elements, making sure, you know, everything's looking, like I said, sort of like relatively symmetrical, um, you know, and that doesn't necessarily have to be your vibe with your graphics, but like I said, I just found that with uh, American Thunder stuff, a lot of the times that's how it was. So um, let's see, the other element that's going on here is these clouds in the background. And with clouds, it's different than, you know, how I said, like you probably shouldn't just go to Google and grab some lightning and throw it in the background. Clouds are clouds, like, they're, they can just sort of be haphazardly placed for the most part. Um, you know, I did do some editing, but you know, you can usually just like throw something in the background and it'll look decent more than half the time. So with this, let's just do a whole new cloud image so I can show you guys how this works. This is pretty good because this um, sort of already has sort of a vignette on it of, you know, darker on the outside. So let's use this one. And I'm basically just gonna do Command A, that will grab the whole image, Command C to copy it. Go back over here, let's get rid of the old clouds. And it actually looks good without them, to be honest, but I just wanted a little something extra in the background. So now we're gonna do Command V to throw in our cloud image. I'm gonna tilt it back this way. I'm holding it on shift so I can move it at um, 
15 degrees at a time. And that's pretty good. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. Um, you know, normally I wouldn't recommend just making an image wide or like stretching it, but clouds are such a like abstract sort of object that it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna do Command U. My computer is making weird sounds, so that's really tight. So I desaturated it completely. It's a black and white image. I'm going to brightness and contrast. Make sure use legacy is clicked. I'm gonna bump up the contrast. I'm bring down the brightness. Um, you could also use the levels tool. In this case, I don't really think it's necessary. Okay, so we're just trying to get it to a place where there's still like some gray values. We don't want it completely thresholded black and white. That's not bad. Okay. And then we're going to double click on that clouds layer. We're gonna do a color overlay on it using the blend mode as multiply towards the top here. And, um, you know, we wanna keep our color palette sort of um, consistent throughout. So, you know, we could try this purple color. We could use, I think I used blue in the other example, which I think we'll probably just stick with here. So yeah, now, if we want to get rid of this um, kind of cloud graphic that, that is showing through um, onto the wolf, the quickest method would be just be erasing it. Um, if you want to make edits that um, are maybe not so permanent, you could just create a new layer above and I mean, actually we could just use this layer also, which is our cover up layer, remember that we used earlier? And we can just use the brush tool. And again, this will lend itself to the painterly quality and just sort of brush out um, with black the clouds. So there we're getting our wolf image back. And um, yeah, you'll find that after a while, like when you've done enough of these, you can, you really do feel sometimes more like a painter than you, than you feel like a teacher designer, like, a, you know, just like a graphic designer. Um, and that's a really kind of cool place to get to when you can really start to trust your eye and just sort of like um, loosely, um, you know, use these techniques and, and loosely brush and, and all that. So, so yeah, that, that, you know, that pretty much did the trick of what we wanted. Um, we should probably get rid of these like hard edges on the side here. So that's again, just using this brush. Um, and you know, if you accidentally, you know, mess up and you brush over something like, oh, that looked actually kind of dope. It's, um, just as easy as hitting Command Z, that'll get you back. And like I said, like you could just use the eraser tool also. It all just comes down to, I don't know, I mean, how you're feeling, I guess. Like if you're feeling confident, you can just use the eraser tool. Um, but um, yeah, it ultimately doesn't really matter how you do it. So this feels pretty good. Um, one thing that I think might add to like the vibe of this is if we made the wolf's eyes um, like purple or blue, because right now, I mean, it's sort it's sort of like lending itself to the um, you know text only strong survive and like maybe if its eyes were like kind of sort of glowing a different color, that could be cool. So to do that. We're gonna zoom in here on the eyes and I'm basically just going to use the polygonal lasso tool and just like cut out the eyes. And since there's black around it, we'll be able to apply, um, you know, either a multiply or an overlay to it and it's not gonna affect the black in any way. So it'll just look like it's 
part of this image. So once you've got those eyes sort of cut out, you can just, I'm just hitting Command J, which basically pops that layer out. So if I delete the wolf layer, you'll see just the eyes are there. So this layer is, I'll just name it eyes. So from here, I'm going to make it a smart object so that we can, you know, edit and, and not be destructive. So I'm gonna do Command U to bring up the hue and saturation window. I'm gonna bring saturation all the way down so it's a black and white image. And then we'll be able to add some sort of um, overlay on it. So here multiply looks a little too dark. So I think if we use overlay instead, yeah, that's what we want. So let's see how purple looks as well. That's kind of dope. What looks better? I, don't know. I think the blue looks better. Yeah, let's use that. And then um, if you wanted to make it pop a little bit more, you could just do like image adjustments, brightness, contrast. And I think if we just bring up the contrast, it'll it'll make the eyes, you know, more white so that more of the blue will essentially be showing through. We don't want too much white though. Yeah, just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, you can just see it pops just a little bit more. So, I mean that for the most part gets us in the you know ballpark of what we want. So now I'm gonna show you guys a really simple way to mock your graphics onto t-shirts. Um, there's going to be a more in-depth tutorial at some point, but I'm still sort of gathering information from the comment section and Instagram DMs, because um, you guys are mentioning mocks sometimes, but um, everyone is different and I'm trying to gather as much information about what is um, you know, confusing to you guys and, and what you might need help with. So um, I'm gonna take all of that into consideration and create a proper tutorial at some point. So stick around for that if that's you know something you're interested in. So. Um, oh, also, there's a texture on top of this entire graphic. Um, if you want to know how to do that, um, I made a video about using textures in Photoshop. It's very simple. Um, it's the easiest method of doing it. And I also include a download link to 15 vintage textures that I personally use. Um, I think they're 10 bucks. And um, yeah, the it's not through Creative Market, it's just going directly to me, so you're supporting the channel, and that's super helpful, so, and I appreciate it. So, um, watch that if that's something you um, are not sure of how to do. Um, it definitely brings your graphics to the next level in terms of making them look more vintage, so, um, yeah, highly recommend it. Anyways, so, if you want to mock this, basically, we can just grab the top layer here and then just go down to the bottom layer and just merge all this together, merge layers. Um, you could also flatten the image, it doesn't really matter. I just decided to merge all of them. So now I'm going to decrease the image size to 1200 because the canvas of our um, mock t-shirt is 1200 pixels. Now I'm doing Command A, that's gonna grab the whole thing. Command C over on our bootleg um, sort of just distressed shirt. Um, I used this in my last video, the selected color video, so you may recognize it. Um, Command V, it's gonna paste it in here, and then right away I'm just gonna go into screen mode, and that's going to make all the blacks of the graphic transparent, so we can just see the t-shirt um, showing through. And then I'm going to make this a smart object, so right click, and then oops, right click, convert smart object, so we can um, decrease the size of the graphic without uh, compromising the quality. I'm gonna leave it sort of oversized, you know, like those, those American Thunder examples. So that looks pretty good there. Um, so basically, if you wanted to get this screen printed, um, you would wanna tell the screen printers to max out the screen size. And, um, you know, every screen printer is different. There are such things as oversized, um, you know, screen printers. 
that will be able to, you know, go onto the sleeve like this, um, which is definitely gonna make it look more like those American Thunder examples. Um, but if you're just going to a standard, you know, if you're just doing a standard screen printing process, you would just wanna tell them to max out the screen size so that will get it as big as possible on the shirt. So, um, yeah, if we wanted to make this look a little bit more um, authentically screen printed, you know, you could just mess around with opacity and lower it a little bit. I'll usually do like 80 or 90 for the most part. If you want to make it look super vintage, you know, you could bring it all the way down to like 50 or 60. Um, the graphics that I were looking at were still relatively um, saturated and bright, so I'm just going to keep this at like, you know, let's just say 80 is good. Um, one other little trick that you could do, um, and it's similar to the opacity method, but in my opinion, it, it can change it just ever so slightly. You just duplicate the, the shirt itself, and then you invert it and create a clipping mask so it's just um, a, being applied to the graphic itself and not the t-shirt, and then do multiply. So that's a really quick way to, um, you know, use the shadows and highlights of the shirt itself to make it look more screen printed. And then you can mess around with the adjustments and, um, you know, make it look, you see how this is just starting to look. It's not, it's not um, completely making it opaque. It's just bringing out the elements of the t-shirt itself like the shadows and highlights so yeah and that basically means that you can keep the opacity of your graphic at 100 so um yeah that's pretty much the most simplistic bare bones method of um of mocking a shirt um stay tuned for the full video um, i'm not sure if i'm going to provide mocks or not it's something that could be easily um, purchased from anyone on creative market um, so yeah I definitely recommend doing that but like I said it's a little bit more advanced um, in terms of like how you use um, the the layers over here there's there's gonna be a lot more going on as opposed to here this is just three layers so um, yeah that pretty much wraps it up for today um, you know, hopefully you guys were able to um, get some useful stuff out of this in terms of like creating those lightning um, bolts and, you know, bringing in different images from, you know, Pexels or wherever and utilizing the bootleg um, selective color um, presets. Um, like I said, um, basically in these videos what I'm trying to do is build up a whole library so that you guys can like use some information from one video use information from another video and everything will come together so that after a while you'll have your own sort of toolkit to work with um, so you can go off and do whatever you want and all of these different methods and techniques will help you guys along the way so that's the goal of this channel thank you guys for being here um, it means so much to me. I hope everyone is staying safe. We're still in this crazy COVID-19 um, pandemic. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, I've had people message me already on like Instagram and leave comments saying like, it's been helpful during this time because it's giving you guys something to do. It's giving you guys something to practice at and, you know, maybe taking your mind off of all this crazy shit that's going on that we're all dealing with. So. Um, again, thank you guys for being here. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure definitely to subscribe because I actually noticed, I was looking through like, you can see like analytics on your videos and it said something like 80% of people who are watching these videos aren't even subscribed. So shout out to the 20% who are subscribed, but uh, it would be awesome if you're watching these videos, if you also subscribe, because that's like encouraging me and it's getting, like, I think the more subscribers I have, the more it plays into YouTube, like, algorithms, and then more people will see this stuff. It'll help them out. We can all make dope t-shirts together and, um, you know, make the world a better place. So 
that is it for today. Like the video, make sure to comment. Let me know what you guys want to see in videos going forward. Um, let me know what I can do to improve on um, videos as well. Um, if I need to slow down certain areas, if I need to explain certain things more, all of those comments are helpful to me and will make this channel that much better. So thank you guys again. That is it for today. Peace.